Clive, the session has started. It's 16.30. Please get on with it. <laughs> that music. Come on. And it, um, in a second, can you put me on? When, when I start the little bits, can you put the picture of my um, me doing me bits on there, please, Paul? Yeah, I'll do it now, mate. We'll start off with um, saying hello to everyone. I haven't been around this weekend because, well, yesterday we were spreading the ashes of my dad's two brothers. So the uh, family family thing going on, and it, it was, to me, it was more important, unfortunately, than mid rail. So sorry, Paul, but my family came first on that That's one. Perfectly understandable, Clive. No problem. Right, we're cutting and shutting. The first thing you got to do. Is this what you want to cut and shut? You can't just go straight in and... Well, I do, but you, you've got to think about what you're going to be cutting and shutting and source the bits that you need to make it. Um, I'm going to be doing different bits for different coaches on the Glasgow Air Class 126 one, Intercity Unit. The, I've done an Edinburgh Clark Edinburgh Glasgow one, but the motor brake second on the air ones had the brake at the far end, whereas the Glasgow ones had at the front end, so it's, it's a unit that's going to look different to what I've already built. Well, first thing you start got to start off with, as I said, what you've chosen rather, what we'll get on with is actually deciding, you know, with that brain point dead. You've got to start marking out stuff ready for cutting. Now, I, I'm quite crude in what I do. Other people would be sitting there with uh, rulers, measuring measuring stuff, etc., wouldn't they? I find it a lot easier to get a photocopy of the drawing. First thing I'll check is that everything is a scale size. And I usually do that, not with a, a long length, we're just checking the wheelbase out. And an 8 foot 6 wheelbase is 80, it's 34 millimetres, and I've got 34 millimetres on that bogey, so I'm happy that this is this is scale size. Paul, do you want to change the camera to Clive's other um, session? So spotlights. Moto G9. Oh, that always come up? I thought it was just Clive. Hey! Hey! I'll re measure that. I see something now, yeah. Oh, let me just adjust the camera. Too much of my belly on there, isn't there? Is that a bit better? They say the camera adds 20 pounds. Just, uh, <clears throat> just doing work, just do it over hustle off, just, just suck it in a bit, you know. <laughs> I can't suck it in, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, great shot. <laughs> um, when I'm mark, marking stuff out, I said I'm a little bit on the crude side of things. I'm just and I work my way down the coach, I don't do here bit, bit, bits here and there. So the first thing is. The, the the camp door, but to get the um, position where the the end of the coach is, you can't find can't see it on the drawing. It's a cut, it's a curved surface. So on the plan, I've marked I've marked where the end would be straight. So that's the first mark I do. Um, line the door up and I mark a little bit in from the door so I don't lose the, the door handle. I know you can put more door handles on but it's easier to try and keep, keep the door handles there. Sometimes it's easier to actually use the door, the, the gap on the door as your, as, as your um, point for cutting. But other times if you want to try and keep door handles, etc. It's easier to move in. Now I've got uh, I'm 
very short of windows for this. I only had three trips coaches. These are, the, um, I'm using trips coaches for this because the Swindon in the city units had shallower windows, the Mark ones. And the trips ones work out right for that. Um, um, in total first seat in bay, I'm going to use the first class windows. The mark there on, onto the mark where I from the door. Just make one mark up there. No, sorry, I've got because I'm short of windows, I'm making a window out of. And for a previous cut, as you can see, um, it's three quarters of one side, and the other, the other side's going to be from that quarter light. So I'll mark that one on. And then mark, go back to remark this so it gets in the right place. You can remember which mark we've got to use. Put the other window in on there. Mark that. Uh, This door and the small window. If I mark the small window in there, then I can come back to this window and mark that. The three second class, they don't, they're not quite lining up. Oh, I didn't do the mark the door, yeah. The, the three second class windows out of this composite break are a little bit wide, but if I was to reduce the amount of cuts I'm having to do, I'm going to leave them as they are. It's not really going to notice that much, so I mark them. Then it's the door with the toilet. Um, do the guard store next. And then come back with that little, little one, to that little window, which leaves me blank areas, which I'm going to use the blank bit off of, of the buffet coach. Small one there. One in there to finish the door off. I might even make it the door width. Um, and then the end of the coach there. When, well, once I've done those little marks, and this is the only time I get a, a square out, we're always working from the same side. So I have found that on some coaches, the, the top and the bottom are not parallel. So if you mark, if you use one of them for the marking, and just work down the same on the same, you know, the same um, edge. Oh no, which one was that? It was the longer one. Yeah. Your marking should come out reasonably, reasonably well. Um, that's basically the marking. Once you mark the coach out, it's then coming coming around to do the cutting space. I'm not going to cut that one. I've got one that's I'm part of the way through on the cutting. Clear those out of the way because they're, they're not part of it. As you see, I've started cutting the, these bits up. Again, I'm matching with the, with the drawing, which I have checked. And on the composite coach, as it was in, on the air set, so the first class on the Glasgow set, 
they're actually spaced out wider than a Mark One coach, much more luxury. Who gives Scotsman more luxury than Englishmen? For, the, for these, I found trying to cut the square because you've got a curved edge. The, the the knife knife wanders; it doesn't stay where where you want it to stay. I've got this ruler. I've had it for donkey's years, and it flexes. And it flexes enough. So I get a straight cut. I don't guess one where the knife can wander. And this is this is the window I'm cutting out. And if my lines are, if, if my square is working correctly, which doesn't always, then. I should have a, a reasonably square edge. I, I just I snap a couple of scores, then snap. It does leave let's see if it's a, bit, a bit closer. Quite a nasty burr on the edge, um, and that's best cleaned off as, as you're going along. And the burr is usually from the the back of the the coat where it's where it's, I've snapped it rather than the front where I've cut it. So just I always try and work with the file at a slight angle so you just take you're taking the back off, not the front off. And so I'm quite crude with my modeling. That's that one in place. Now, between that and the next one, there's going to be a gap. I've already scored these. So you're getting things ready. Some like me to be ready, isn't it? Please do ask questions as we're going along. Just, you don't just hear my voice, do you? Well, here's one question. It's probably a bit stupid. Um, when you actually line up the sections, do you put a bit of um, salad tape or something similar on the front there to keep the same profile so they don't um, move relative to each other, or, or don't you uh, need to do that? Now, when I get to the assembly point, Hugh, you'll see how crude, see, again, how crude my modelling is. Um, well, I don't, I don't, um, Hold them together as a glue. Them they, uh, they go together. Then that's, that's fair enough. The only thing I, I do if I'm, I've got a coach that's got lots of lots of bits in it, like this one will have. When it's assembled, I'll put weights on to try and keep the everything flat. Um, but uh, otherwise, no. That's fair enough. It's something I've. To, to, to the yeah. at some time, I think. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Hugh. That's something I haven't thought about. No, the only reason I mentioned that one is because um, in my previous job, when I was doing a lot of strain gauges, we actually used use salad tape or something similar for aligning things and for keeping the um, keeping a profile on stuff. So I was just wondering whether something similar would, whether people were using something similar or not. But that's no, fine. Not a problem. No, no, that was, that, no, that was something I've not really considered. So, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you very much. Every now and then, I cut too too many strokes, and you get too much of a build up of a burr on the outer edge, on the top edge. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to put them in apprentice. When you remove a burr, this is the one at the back here, on on a, on a surface, you try and keep. You file on the top of the surface to remove the bird. You don't put a 45 degree angle on it. Hmm. Or else you've got a lot more filling to do. 
Five, um, did you say you were using tricks? Yeah. So is there a chassis to that coach like a like a Hornby? I'm going into the picture. I'm going to be using Hornby chassis. Ah, right. Okay. So, so I'll get the right length. So when you stick your bits together, can't you mount them in the chassis to, to you know, don't stick them to the chassis, but stick them to each other as, as they're mounted in the chassis? Uh, the, the way I glue things together, half it will be stuck in the coach and in the, in the chassis and half will be not stuck in the coach. And I'll, I'll break it getting it out. <laughs> I don't know how crazy it? I am. So does the um, the side of the tricks, the trick sides, do they slip into that slot? In in, in no, what? I should show you that. And with the tricks one, you've got a, a similar. Right. Uh, can you see it? A yeah. Same thing to what a uh, Hornby one would have. Yeah. yeah. Well, I removed that because I want to make the tricks coach side deeper. Um, right. But and then that, I put more backing on it. it wouldn't that um, that turn in at the bottom? Wouldn't that sit on top of the the Hornby coach chassis where where there's a where the slot is? Wouldn't that turn in sit on top of there? Might do. Um, instead, put... instead, uh, and use the then you end up with the Hornby chassis for you know forming the the side. Instead of cutting those lips, call them a lip if you like. Cutting that instead yeah. of cutting those off, let that fall, you know, sit on the coach, the Hornby chassis. Well, one of the things I found is that the groove on the Hornby, Hornby chassis is further in than the groove that was on the Trix coach chassis. Yeah, okay. So, um, Here's one of the sides from the on the Edinburgh coaches. In fact, uh, they're quite wide, backing up the back of the coach. Yeah. Before putting the <coughs> locating lip, lip on it. See what what you're doing is kind of like what I do, except that um, I use a, a sheet of perspex instead of cutting up bits of side. But when I want to to fit the the perspex side to the Hornby chassis then I I have to build the, the I have to make the bottom of the chassis wider not not on the underframe but on on that slot if if you can yeah. imagine what I'm talking about and then my my sides sit against that um <clears throat> I'll see if I can show you later because it might just make things easier when you line it all up yeah I'm, I'm open to Suggestions, yeah. I'll see if I can find an example. Carry on, sorry. <laughs> I know about something, about something very similar, but it was, um, it was first part work um, coaches a few years back. But the trouble was that the with this with the little ridge and the slot it went into was interrupted in a few places. So, you know, and also they probably sit different distances back as well. So it's, there's all sorts of traps for the unwary. Yeah, um, I think every coach I build, I find something new that I have to do to it. And I've got through quite a few of them just over the last couple of years. Don't forget, Ty's been doing these for about 55 years. <laughs> um, so he knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah, unlike me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. No, I can, I can agree with that. Right, what's some, let me just get the burrs off of this, this bit here. And I guess you're using the Hornby roof? Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, because the tricks one's too narrow, isn't it? Uh, I suppose it would be, yeah. And, and, and it ends up being too short as well, so. Can I just show you what mine, what it yeah. does on mine? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, a bit funny holding up a thing to the coat. To the... Can you see that at all? Uh, 
Pouco me put. And Dave's done. Dave's one up. I'm not sure what we're doing here. No, I, I'll make you. I'll make you the largest, Dave. You just back a little. Yeah. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. I'm trying to get it focused. Yeah, I'm trying to get it focused. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
you know, uh, wobbly windows are, are more noticeable than well, the, the top if it's if it's on the one if it's on the one. You've got the guttering on the coach roof that will hide that away. And well, we all like following a wobbly bottom. But if you've got a wobbly bottom on a coach, you can follow that straight. If you've got wonky windows, it's going to look crap. Um, and then there's no way of getting out of that, um, having wonky windows if you build the coach with wonky windows, is there? Now, a lot of you are going to say, why isn't he using his square? Check it as square. Like a good engineer, like he was trained to be. Because that one ain't square. And if, the most important thing is you get them so they match rather than they're all perfectly square. Because the filler will hide up anything that's on the, you know, on the vertical um, Virtually not right. Now push that against there. That's a lot better. I have found with um, uh, old trying coaches that sometimes the sides have walked like that. Only a little bit. So when you mark up everything square, because it's square to, to that point, isn't it? And you put it all back together again. And you put it all nice, you know, you, this is the days when I was checking everything square. I end up with a, a banana shaped coach. And doing like I do now, lining up the windows, not, not using the bottom or something. I get away with not having any banana shaped coaches, says he. We've got the banana shaped coach to show you later on, I think. I don't use liquid cement for much of my work. I've discovered this stuff 30 odd years ago. I've used it ever since. It's, it does have a capillary type action like the liquid, liquid um, solvents. But it's got another uh, part, um, what was it? Brain, brain. It, it doesn't dry immediately like liquid cement does, the liquid glue glue. It, Gives you that little bit of play. So if you stick something on and it's not quite right, you can adjust it and then let it set. Downside, with my clumsiness, and it's happened here. Bring it up close. Oh, it's so awkward to do this when you end up with glue marks. Can you see the glue mark on it? And that's my clumsiness. Other people would be a lot neater than me and a lot, lot they've, they've got more care and won't end up with glue marks all over the place. But you can pile them out and when you get a pillar on it, it they disappear. Godsend if you use it properly. So I'm trying to work so you can see what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing. Well, a wee bit of a gap there at the, at the top between the two, those two pieces. So I'm just going to take a little bit off of there to try and reduce the gap down. The other thing with that, that to revel glue, Clive, is it doesn't um, make the windows go cloudy if you use them on, on clear windows either. Doesn't it? No. I use it I use it for putting my windows back in coaches. And yeah. so the capillary action pulls it underneath. It's, it's really good. Yeah, but if you've got 
Thick fingers like mine, you put fingerprints all over the blue one, wouldn't you? Gloves. Put some gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> not, not woolly ones, you know, the, uh, the, the blue surgical gloves or something. That's always a good one. Because <laughs> you know, you, what you spot is fingerprints, isn't it? You don't spot marks as much. It's actually the grain, you know, it's the print of your finger. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, when I'm dead and gone and people try to sell my coaches on, they, they'll be able to say, that is a more more um, you know, original. It's got his fingerprint all over it. Clive, is that glue called the contactor professional? Yeah. Right. That's uh, what that's what I use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Humble done a sim. I do a similar one, but I don't find the humble one as good. No, you're right. You're right. <clears throat> I've got a lump in the middle now. So we've got top hand bottom. Fuck that. A lot of the small birds you can you take off more successfully with your, um, your fingernail than you can with a tool. Right, let's just check with the. No, it's a little high. That's why you need it to adjust, because if that was liquid in there, that'd be on there solid and you'll be able to adjust it. So you have to put, put the cement back on again to free it up, don't you? Oh, it's a pain in the backside. The next bit's a blank opposite the same bit of coach, opposite the toilet on the other side. And then the last little bit is the driver's window. It's not a door, it's just a window on the but it's the the window is the same as the drop light on, on the on doors. There's it put together. I hope it's helpful to see that because I've done it in diff different colours, it the the, the, the um, cuts and stuff I show it up a little bit better, don't they? Um, on the opposite side, because I'm I'm short of windows, I think in the buffet windows there still need to be neatened up and then I've got to make my own ventilators for them. So that's not really too hard a job. I did also some main line coach windows. Main line made their coaches too short in height, but everything else is correct for the mark one. Well I go to all that effort and get it wrong, but whoever the designer is working for main line stuff is now working for Helgen. The, and I've had to cut cut the bottom the bottom strip off the um, ventilator and shorten the ventilator and stick it back on the higher up. And I'm going to use them in these coaches. Then I've recounted the number of tricks windows and they just I just have enough. Put that one back into its coach. This is one of, one of my Edinburgh coaches. You can see I've put the, the strip down there to bring the coach side up to full height. I'm toying with the idea of this, 
they had a, a turn under, like a Mark II coach, rather than a continuous curve. I knew some of the old trying Tolson coaches in conversions and put the curve at the bottom of the fence as, as a similar sort of curve. I'm you know, pulling the idea of just trying a little bit off, off of this to curve it, try and get that more of a Swindon profile than a Mark I profile. Then I've got things like the ends to do on the driving ones. Normal, normal thing when making DNUs, finding something to put in between the bogeys. Mark I bogeys are so similar in shape to the DMU one. Get rid of the tie bar on the bottom. Change the, the bolster on, in the middle. File down the tops of the axle boxes. Put a, a little bit of round bit of plastic on top of the axle boxes. That represent a roller bearing. And you've got a DMU bogey. And with the Hornby ones riding to too high, you put the um, put 12 millimeter wheels in that a BME is supposed to have, and they come up, to, they run at right high. Uh, you, with the with the trips coaches, obviously you left with an interior. What millions of interiors I need to sort out? Coach coach roof's too too narrow for a Mark One. But there is a use for them. The underframe, if you change the, the trips bogies off, put on some um, L L in the R ones, clear all this muck out and put L in the R underframe crossing on, they work out the right size for my Gresley cups and shuts, which I do out of the Hornby Shorty Gresleys. Five. While you've got that in your hand, yeah. can you measure the bogey wheelbase for me, please? It's, I know it's 33. Thirty-three and a bit. Okay, cheers. All right. Because I use them with scale wheels. Let's go under Mark 1s. And then they come up with like Conwell, you know, with like scale. Oh, yeah. um, Conwell phobies. You can, I think you could give half a millimetre in wheelbase, can't you? No, I was thinking for HO, not um, four mil. They're too big for HO, <laughs> are they? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, they, they come up good for four mil. And it's a cheap way of obtaining them. Come on, bogies. You can pick up a tricks coach for the same price as a pair of spare Batman bogies. So, then you can know, use tricks coach for cutting and shutting. You've got, you've got something for nothing, really, haven't you, with the bogies? This is actually my prize Mark I um, cut and shut. It's a Diagram 30 riddle car. And I made it out of bits and bobs left over from other conversions. I should really get around to finishing and painting it, but I just love showing people what you can do with all the bits that are left over. The, the trips roof, as I said, it was too narrow. Um, Hasting units are easy to the scratch bill because they're flat, sided. And trip through to the right profile. So yeah, it looks good. I'm going to build a, a success because most people go for the six long, don't they? The six L or the six six B. I'm going with success, yeah. which is and if you're into doing things like tadpole units, a couple of tricks coaches and you've got it, haven't you? The this one's on a mark one under frame, but the rest of the train's going to be on spare tricks under frame. We've got too many tricks under frames now. Uh, the most brake second on the one that 
I was marking out. We end up with a plastic card front end. Not too hard to build if you if you know how to use plastic card. Uh, that's my even better one. See what I'm saying about the the brakes at the front end, not the back end. Which you, I think that was the distinguishing thing about the, you know, when looking at the unit as to which ones were if anybody on which ones the glass there by telling where the brake is. They're telling anybody or air air units. They weren't compatible. Although they did um when they withdrew the the uh, Edinburgh Glasgow unit, some of the coaches went over to the, the other side of the um Clyde to run on the air services and they had to modify the control gear on them. Yet they're all white circle. Perhaps someone in VR engineering, to, you know, in the engineering world, be able to tell me why they, they were like that, but I've got a clue. Some were cut and shuts. Um, a lot always on stuff that you can't get. This this one is a standard mark one break second. I won a loss of coaches on on Vectis auction, and the, I had too many composites, and I had too many of the Hornby overlength brakes, but not enough brake coaches. So instead of going out and buying another brake second, I've got a bit of chop, chopping and making that one. A lot of the older ranges are really good for cutting and shutting because you can pick them up quite cheaply. And if you like me into steam era stuff as well as modern image, in top things about, and this is this one's a LMS 62 foot long. Um, Great composite. Now, I can't see any manufacturer coming up with a non standard chassis for one type of coach because these were the only ones ever on the 62 foot chassis and of LMS coaches. And this comes from a couple of Airfix coaches. And You can get pick them up for 10, 15 quid. Oh, it's got its gangway. This is what I really enjoyed doing. Uh, it's it is an actual conversion that the British Railway's done on an LMS second um, kitchen car. They made it into a buffet. There's the blank area here for the buffet. It was a one-off coach, but it seemed ideal for what I needed for my, my layout. So again, Airfix coaches using the Dapo and this became Hornby 12-wheeler dining car. That's an earlier version of RMS coach with what's called a period two coach. And the, the bit, bits I learned from the period two coach have ended up being a, a, a period two composite. So I don't, don't try and waste anything. Anyone got any questions? Oh, I've got to say. You know saying about lining up the windows? When, when doing something like an LNER coach where you've got the beading along there, it's far easier following the beading uh, to, to sit, you know, to check everything's in line because you've got something to, so that you can put the put your ruler up against and say, yeah, that is straight. Right. Question. So I want to be also two kids, that one. Pardon? Is that our only R one, one of the old cook kits? 
No, that's um, a lengthened Hornby one. Hornby done some LNR coaches, which they made them 57 foot. Don't know why. Oh, yeah. And they, but the, the, um, the compartment sizes on these 57 foot coaches on, coaches on day coaches are correct size. They, they just shuffled the toilets to make them make the toilets smaller. Oh, right. So, and you can buy them at 10 to 15 quid each. Hmm. I, I chop them about, make up um, all sorts of different LNER coaches from them. They don't hardly cost anything. It's great. <laughs> this means I can make the Make proper length chassis for them. Hence, the when I found that the the tricks ones was for the right length for most LNR coaches, I was in heaven. Or oh, back to the the DMU power and dent DMUs is always a a problem. Um, many of my DMUs have the Hornby power unit. Oh no, who's doing that? I can hear you all screaming. <laughs> <laughs> but you, again, you get, I've, well, I've got so many locos of eight foot six wheelbase bogies, and I've managed to pick up quite a lot of these these frames. I just take the power unit out the, out the loco for the DMU, and if I want to run the loco, and I don't run all my DMUs, I can't fit all my DMUs on the layout. Um, it's quite easy to go and raise the DMUs for power units if you want to run the loco. So, and that's the beauty of all the clip fit stuff in the Hornby Power Bogey, isn't it? Oh, Ev, how are you fitting that into the coach? What are you keeping it in the coach with? Just two semicircles. All right. Curved bits of um, plastic card that clip onto there. Uh, you have to work out where, where inside you, how far up you've got to cut away for the um, right the, the, the speaker. Is that the uh, type of bogey with a, a flat on the top, a metal a metal uh, body on the motor, and yeah. the top of the motor's got a flat. Yeah. Sometimes I. Um, I stick a, a big pop stud to that and uh, similar in the top of the coach. Now, I've done that, I've done that in the past. Um, I've done a few locos like it. Uh, but I've had a couple of times when the arrow diet that I've used to hold the, hold the um, press stud in place, that's given way. And I've got to pull the power bogey off to service it. You can't get in to service it. Right. And I've got the the half that's supposed to be stuck up in the, the roof still sitting on top of the um, power bogey. Perhaps right. I'm using... <coughs> yeah. Uh, perhaps the springs need to... Cause it, they're like a little spring inside, isn't there? Perhaps that, uh, uh, press yes, that's... Yeah, that's right. Um, you need to weaken that a little bit or something, don't, isn't it? Sometimes I've... Um... On the top of the bogey, I've drilled a hole and tapped in a brass screw and soldered the pop stud to the brass screw and uh, similar in the top of the coach. Yeah, there's, there's thousands of ways of doing different things, isn't there? Yes, oh yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the beauty of model making is that if you find a way that's suitable for yourself, it doesn't matter what other people do, but you can learn from other people how they do stuff. Do you agree, Dave? I absolutely. I've learned a lot of stuff from other people. <laughs> I'm always yeah. nicking ideas. It's the best way. Yeah. I remember at one exhibition, I was, I was doing something, and this chap said to me, you're not doing that right. I read an update, and it was one of the old updates, Clive Mortimer said to do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he walked away and 
um, Paul Wilkins, Paul Wilkinson can sit next to me and look at my name badge to see if it's the same Clive Mortimer, but I yeah. <laughs> um, thought he was younger. Clive, can I can I just check that you've you've checked the prototype of that coach and it does have all those different colours on it. Yeah, livery. <laughs> <laughs> Good with delivery, Clive. One day I'm gonna have oh uh, I'm gonna get my paint paint station up and running and paint stuff. One day. <laughs> no rush. No <laughs> rush. No. Do it in your own time, Clive. Yeah. <laughs> Clive, you're gonna fit you're gonna fit flush glazing as well once you've painted them, Clive. If um Southeast Southeast Pine Cars still carry on doing their flush glazing for the Tricks coaches, if not, nah. <laughs> uh, well, otherwise, you'll have to come back in the afterlife, won't you, to finish all them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, you mentioned drive units, Clive. I don't know how many of you use uh, Lendons of Cardiff. Um, oh, I'll just get into that. Yeah, he's brilliant. I've got, I mean, the drive units, I've got loads of Coco and Bobo drive units, and I use, by changing the side frames, of course, you can. The class 66 ones he bangs out for about 10 or 11 quid each. And the, the Bobo ones currently, there's, a, I think, about nine pounds. And they're so much better than the ones, you know, those older ones you're fitting there, Clive, yeah. like the HST. These are the Chinese ones with the split pin on the top of them that you can mount into a bit of plastic. Like that. They arrived on Saturday. That's it. Yeah, you've got them, Clive. Yeah, I knew you'd be aware. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he's got he's got he's got, got them in a lot of the news at the moment. Yeah. Um, how long he how many he gets and how long they're being stolen? That's another question, isn't it? Once people realise that they go like mad, don't they? You know who yeah. snaps? You know who snaps the stuff up off him is the guy at Peter Spares, and he bangs it out for double the price. Because when you talk to um, I can't remember his name, um, Rob at Lendon's, he's a nice yeah. bloke, but. Uh, Peter Spares snaps up a lot of his stuff once he gets it in. Because, I mean, he had... Um, I've sent it out a link to everyone. He had um, bogeys in the other day, Class 37 bogeys. And I think they've uh, almost all gone now, a pound each, you know, without the wheels. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's, he's, his prices are very good. I mean, he doesn't... He obviously he's still making out of it, but it's um, relatively cheap compared to a lot of people. Well, Peter Spares are also very good. When they've got something in stock, they're... they're yeah, you, you contact them and say, can I have X, Y, Z? And it's there the next day. That's I'm true. Gonna, I'm, yeah, the, and they, they, um, they have some of that some of stuff that Lendon doesn't have, don't they? And I find their website a little easier to negotiate than the Lendon one. Anyway, back to power units. I've somehow ended up with some spare Lima ones, so I ain't got a clue what I'm going to use this with it, um, this unit. I've got Quite a bit of choice. Uh, I think that's it. I might as well show you the Hadrian bar. Uh, one of my uh, mates off of um, RM Web is a Southern, Southern, Rail, Southern Region modular, but he's into Steam. And when the Hadrian bar was withdrawn from service in and well, it was replaced with a BR Mark I Pullman. Hadrian's Bar got transferred to the southern region, had a buffet car, and ran in um, green livery. Sorry, folks, my phone's ringing. Shall I just get my phone? Hello. Hello. My wife is turned up. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, how's things? That's the, that's, the, that's the bar area. Right, I think I've concluded. Anyone any more questions? I'm just thinking. You go, look at the camera, so people can see you. <laughs> Five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've taken a few photos and I'll put them on Facebook rather than show them on here. Um, so that you can see how I support the sides on my coaches in a Hornby chassis and a Hornby roof. That might just help you. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. And you put it up on the Lib Rail 
Facebook page, yeah. have you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at that a little later, mate. Cheers. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for pushing up with me. Um, if one of you's learned anything, I, I feel quite happy. If, if it's two of you, I'll be over the moon. Thank you, guys. I'm sure, we have, Clive. Yep. Cheers, Clive. Yeah. Thanks, good. Clive. Excellent. Yeah, that's Definitely. Very well done. Thank you. Clive, very enjoyable. Yep. Put your workbench back to normal now and get all the rubbish back on there. <laughs>